Hello everyone, um, good afternoon. I am Praise God Aminu, and like she said, I am a PhD student at the University of Pittsburgh, and my colleague is Udwak Abasi Oya from Covenant University, PhD students as well. Um, the topic for today is discourse stylistic um, features in the Redua Secessionist Group um, social media campaign. As an introduction, I think it's important for us to note that discourse stylistic analysis is of, is of importance to scholars who wish to investigate how context contributes to meaning making and its significance in producing languages or um, conversations that have stylistic um, qualities embedded in them. It's concerned with um, the study and examination of various methods that linguistic um, elements take into use. For example, the um, language used by Odua Secessionist Group. And the Odua Secessionist Group is an ethnic separatist movement that seeks an independence nation for the Yoruba of Southwest Nigeria. The group adopts a radical approach to secessionism and has conducted extensive online campaign and activism on social media. Unfortunately, though, there appears to be very insignificant, or should I say, insufficient linguistic researches on this particular group. Therefore, using the social media post by this group, we are going to be uncovering the discourse stylistic devices at work from the standpoint of sociocognitive model of CDA and SMCDA. The Dura Secessionist group is a group that started out of um, insatisfaction for the Nigerian government. Um, there were beliefs that the British government um, favored the House of People, and was still the annulment of the June 12, 1994 election won by a Yoruba philanthropist by a northerner sparked the formation of this group in August 1994. In the year 2000, the journalist Agbulu Aje in 2021 said that um, the secretary of the OPC, Kayode Ogundamisi, asserted that the group aimed at creating, quote unquote, an autonomous southwestern area in a friendly Nigeria or an ind independent Odudua Republic in an unfriendly Nigeria. In 2020, the assumption that the President Mohamed Bari administration victimized the Yoruba group instigated the creation of social media campaigns. And um, these campaigns were majorly done on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to communicate their arguments, goals, campaign strategies, and to mot motivate existing members as well as to galvanize new ones. So this is a picture of the secessionists. Um, they're protesting in London. Um, so Chilua 2012 asserts that sociopolitical and economic interests have aided in the encouragement and formation of virtual communities and online discursive forums. And according to Pameli, we see that militants, groups, and ex extremist organizations have in fact found the social media as a fertile ground through which the arguments could be made known to the public. Studies on language news um, by registrant group agree that groups integrate highly organized resistance with threats and rhetorical warfare as a communicative strategy. Since they foster clarity, confidentiality, safety, and mutual relationship, as well as produce and provide a forum for collective identity, Facebook and Twitter particularly have proven to be more productive in social movements, organization, and networking. For the theoretical framework for this study, um, we utilized Van Dyke's sociocognitive approach to CDA. We talks about um, we versus us dichotomy. That is, a group see themselves as we, and then they see another group as them. And that kind of constructs the, the ideological argument and framework. And the second um, theory that will be used is the social media critical discourse approach, which talks about the interaction between the social media and societal issues. As a methodology, just like my previous colleagues who just presented, um, I utilize um, Python and this simply because of its ability to generate large data at once. And Twitter and Facebook, because the digital session sessionists, mainly use these um, platforms. And we use um, keywords such as Odudua, Yoruba Nation, and so on to get this tweet. Overall, we gathered um, 1,000 tweets, but for this study, we utilized 500 purposively selected. And the posts we used were from October 2020 to May 2021, because this was the period that was active for these people. And yes, because of time, only major discursive stylistic features were selected for this presentation. These are the um, selective devices that were gathered throughout the study, and each shall form the bone of this analysis. The use of Yoruba language. Language is not only seen as a tool for communication or for propagating thoughts, but it's also based on specific ideological framework that um, institutionalizes an ideology. In F1, for example, we see that there is a clear evidence of ethnic polarization where the secessionists cost the Hausa people. This is a discursive attempt to regard the Hausa people as an outgroup. For those who may not read it, it's Aye Hausa Onida Ashiami. It simply means it wouldn't be well with you. 
outside. <laughs> yes. And yes, in T59, we see the author making reference to one of the goals of the group. However, by using the Yoruba language, the author iconizes their shared identity with the group, and this helps them in reminding the group of the identity and their ideology, etc. The use of Yoruba language simply serves as an attempt to reinvent the Nigerian identity. There is also the use of indexicality. For example, in F46, we see the use of yesterday, which implies the um, period Nigeria was ruled by the present moment of Buhari, today where it is currently ruled by the administration, and tomorrow where the administration would be over, and which they are actually against. Then the double use of we in C69, C67 um, is significant because the first use of we simply means the Odusa secessionist group, and then the second we refers to the house, to the Nigerians, actually. So that's a dichotomy, but contextually significant. Then there is the use of hate speech, of course. Um, for example, in F51, we see where um, the Hausa or the Fulani people are being denigrated, and the author makes explicit reference to the Hausa people and significantly names the Hausa generation mad people. This strategy portrays hatred, antagonism, and violent social media behavior. The use of hashtag, of course. Um, hashtag is used in their posts to create new topics, to um, add to new ones, and to you know, share their ideologies, their identity, and their arguments. There's also the use of threatening languages. For example, we see in C88, we will kill the Yoruba politicians running for 2023 presidency. Um, these tweets exemplify the fact that the secessionists are willing to go any length to ensure their goals are fulfilled. However, there's a possibility that these are just null and void statements. For example, Sheyitu Nobu ran for the presidency and is Yoruba, and nothing has happened to him until now. Of course, there's the use of coinages, which signifies some ideological significance. For example, we see the use of Boko Hari. So the terrorist group Boko Haram and Buhari are coined simply because the Buhari administration have perceived or is perceived to um, form alliance with the terrorist group and is empowering them, you know, the more. So we had um, a quantitative analysis, um, and we see that hate speech appears to be the most frequent device, and this is because um, um, it pervades the social media discourse published by the group and has the potential to affect one's psyche and create a legacy of hate and suspicion which may be passed on to successive generations. In conclusion, it's expected that grammatical and discursive um, structures come out to active discourse, such as hate speech, coinages, threatening language that portray prejudice and cultural divisiveness are evident in discourses produced by this group. The secessionist movement as the marginal marginalized group strongly enunciates their cultural and geology through these strategies and in pursuit of their self-determination, accentuates their beliefs and resistance ideology in ethnic difference and cultural divisiveness. This paper highlights the overlap between sociocognitive CDA and social media critical discourse studies, and it advances the study of social media movements, protest rhetoric, and online activism in a case that received very little attention in literature. Thank you very much. <laughs>